Hi, I'm Andy Jones, content editor for Platt's online education program, Let's Paint, and I'd like to welcome you to Color Lessons. Today, we're painting Chartreuse Vase. For all of our color lessons, I'm using Folk Art's Pure Artist Pigment Paint. It's been specially formulated to be very, very thick so that you can use this for a wide range of painting techniques. We can use it thinned down for transparent watercolor effects, or you can use it with a palette knife for really thick, rich impasto work. The 20 colors of Folk Art Pure Artist Pigments are available at platonline.com forward slash let's paint. And in the set, there is also a great color theory worksheet that is specially coded for you to paint on and reuse if you'd like to. And this is included in the kit with the 20 colors. So this is a great color theory booklet and we also support this with an online video. I'm also using the Folk Art Pure Artist Pigment Mixing Mat. And this is a great tool to use in place of a palette. It's a reusable silicone mat and it has spaces to put your colors out around the edge of the palette. Part of it is gray so that you can see exactly what value of colors that you're using. Part of it's white so that you can see how transparent a color is. It also has a quick guide for color harmonies as well as a little vocabulary list so that you can keep yourself familiar with color theory terms. This is a great product and I think you'll really enjoy using it and you can use it over and over and over. It cleans off beautifully and does not stain. For all the color lessons, I'm using the Folk Art Select Firm Bristle Brush. These brushes have been designed with a firm bristle synthetic filament and it is great for canvas painting. It will stand up to lots of abuse. With care and cleaning, these brushes will last you a long, long time. They're perfect for canvas painting as well as any other kind of fabric painting that you're going to do. I think you're really going to love these Folk Art Select Firm Bristle Brushes. They're available at platonline.com forward slash let's paint in a package of seven beautiful brushes. Some of you are concerned that you can't draw. Well, we've got you covered because we're teaching you how to paint, not how to draw. The color lessons come with a package of full color photographs so that you have a complete uh, set of all of the photographs for all of your color lessons paintings. In addition to that, we have full size pattern sheets. So they're uh, printed out for you so you don't have to enlarge anything and you can transfer the designs directly to your canvas. So these also are available at platonline.com forward slash let's paint. I have a 12 by 12 artist canvas, and this is just a, a canvas that is uh, primed with a white uh, latex primer. And then I've transferred my sketch onto the canvas using gray transfer paper. Make sure that your table line is square to the edge of your canvas. You don't want your uh, table line to be higher on one side than the other because that'll look very strange in the finished painting. But we're going to begin this particular painting by creating uh, our background color. And this is a very transparent kind of washy watercolor look. And there are a number of ways that you can achieve that. You could simply mix up some pastel colors and apply those. But we're going to do ours by actually making our, tra our paint transparent. The Folk Art Pure Artist pigments are relatively thick in consistency and they're richly pigmented. So the easiest way to make them a nice transparent color is to use some Folk Art floating medium, which I will put in a small dish so that it's not uh, on my palette. It's just easier for me to find it uh, when it's off to the side in a little dish. And then I've got some colors out on my palette already. I have some Viridian, I have medium yellow, Yellow Light, Payne's Gray, Dioxazine Purple, Ultramarine Blue, Prussian Blue, and Titanium White. And this is a, a nice palette of colors that I'll be using throughout the painting. And if I need additional colors, then I'll let you know when I've added those uh, to my palette. But we're going to start um, simply by uh, creating some transparent colors just by brush mixing. So I'm going to dip my brush into the Folk Art Floating Medium and work it into the bristles of the brush on my mixing mat. And this is called dressing the brush. So basically just filling the brush 
with the Folk Art Floating Medium. And I want you to get into the habit of holding your brush so that the handle of the brush is where the tip of the handle is where your pinky meets your palm and then you grasp the brush like this. We have floating medium in our brush and we've loaded the brush with that and I'm going to pick up a very small amount of dioxazine purple and I'm moving it over here on the mixing mat so that I can show you just how transparent this color is. You can see through the color uh, and see the gray of the palette very easily. So if I were to brush some of this on my canvas, you can see that I have a very, very transparent color. And that's exactly what we want to get started with. So floating medium and dioxazine purple on our brush. And we are going to begin to just apply some color to our canvas. Uh, there's nothing in particular that we're doing. We're just creating some soft, gentle background color. And I'm just continuing to add varying amounts of floating medium to the brush and applying it to the canvas, just kind of putting some of this uh, transparent purple on the canvas. And you want to make sure to go inside of your design lines a little bit and just apply this using vertical strokes. All right, I'm going to pick up a little ultramarine blue and I'm going to mix that in just to vary the tone of my background a little bit. And I'm just mixing that in with the transparent dioxazine purple that I had here on the mixing mat, just creating a color that's a little bit more blue. And we're just going to add that in and just soften this into the background a little bit and add some more stronger color over here. And no two backgrounds that you do will ever look the same. Every painting is going to be uh, quite different from every other painting that you do. So I'm going to now wipe my brush on my blue shop towel and I like to pinch it between the shop towel so that I get all of the paint off of the outside edge and I groom the brush back to a nice chisel edge. So I'm going to pick up some titanium white on my brush and I'm also going to mix that in with a little floating medium. I'll do that here on the palette so you can see that. So even my white in the background is going to be uh, translucent. And I'm just going to add some white in. And that is just going to help me soften uh, some of this purple. So once again, just softening this color. I can add more white to it. Your goal is to have just a background that's got some pleasing color that is kind of abstract in feel. Just varying tones of right now we just have some blues and purples going on. But we're going to change that in just a second here because I'm going to pick up just a tiny bit of Viridian and I'm just going to mix that in here on my palette where I had my purple and blue. So again, I'm not cleaning my brush, but I'm just adding some different colors. And I'm gonna add a little bit more floating medium to this just to help move this color around. And I'm just gonna work that right down to my table line and then just soften that color into the background. I'm softening using a light pressure on the brush just to remove some of the brush marks. But if you have some brush marks like that, that's going to be perfectly fine. And I'm just going to move some of this color around, just creating a little bit more visual interest in the background. I'm going to pick up more white. And however you work your background is going to be just fine, as long as you remember to have the color nice and soft. Just working some color here on the background and softening it in using lighter pressure on my brush. Slowly adding a little bit more white to my mixture here on the palette. And I can come back in here and just add a little bit of bright white over that and soften that in. Really can 
uh, just play around with the background color. And I'm going to add, uh, I'm going to pick up more white on my brush, and I'm going to add some yellow light to my brush to make a soft, soft buttery color. Add a little bit more folk art floating medium to it. And I'm going to just add this very soft yellow here against the table line. And you don't want this color to be too strong. We're just going to brush this color on right along the table line and soften that color up into our painting a little bit. And in our next step, we're going to really develop some nice dark area here. So don't be concerned that that's light right now. And in the finished painting, you see it is much darker. But I'm just going to soften this yellow in. I want to make sure that I'm not making it all green here in the background, but just adding a little bit of warmth here. And I can just kind of take whatever's left on my brush and I can add a little bit of warmth here in the background. Okay, I'm going, I need to, I just noticed right there next to my, my vase, I don't have any color. So I want to come back and I just want to add a little bit of color to make sure that it's coming over that design line so that there's not a gap between my background and my vase. All right, so I'm pretty happy with the background at this point. Um, I, I don't think I, well, I'm looking at it and I do want to do just a little bit of uh, accenting here. So I'm going to pick up a little bit more white on my brush and just add a couple of little hints of white here and there. This is just my dirty brush and I've added some more titanium white to it and just adding some of this white in and that's creating a little bit of visual interest here in the background. Okay, so my background looks pretty pleasing to me. I've come inside my pattern line so that I'm not going to have any uh, canvas showing uh, around my flower forms or next to the vase. So at this point, once you have done your background to this point, it's probably a good idea to pause your video and to dry your painting either using a hair dryer or a heat gun. So we'll uh, pause the video now, and when we come back, my background will be dry and we'll be ready to paint our base. Okay, we have completed our initial background and we've dried it. Uh, I use a heat gun. The Folk Art Pure Artist Pigment Paints have an extended working time, which is great, but when you're ready to dry them, I like to use a heat gun so that it gets a little extra heat and air on it to dry them a little bit more rapidly. So because we have our background on and it's dry, I don't have to worry about getting my hands in that or the paint mixing in with anything that I put on top of it. So we're good to let that dry, and now we're gonna turn our attention to our chartreuse vase. So on my palette, I have Viridian, medium yellow, and yellow light, and that is what I'm going to use to create uh, the chartreuse color for the vase. So I'm gonna take some medium yellow, and I'm just gonna move that to a new spot on my palette. And I'm actually going to mix two different colors of green. Uh, we could do all of this mixing with our brush, but it's nice to um, go ahead and have some of our um, mass tones uh, pre-mixed before we get started. So I'm going to add a little chunk of yellow light to this. And using my palette knife, I'm just going to mix the two yellows together to create a really nice, vivid kind of primary yellow color. All right, and to that yellow, I'm going to begin to add very small amount of Viridian. Viridian is a very, very strong color, has what we would call a lot of tinting strength, which means it's not going to take very much Viridian to turn a puddle of yellow into a green color. And I want you to mix your paint, uh, smashing the paint down and then pushing it back together into a puddle. If you just try to stir your paint, you're never really going to get it mixed. So you need to really mash the paint and then 
push it back into a pile so that it doesn't dry itself out. All right, now I'm thinking that that looks like a pretty good chartreuse color for the main color of my vase. So I'm going to clean my palette knife and I'm going to move some of this color aside. And I'm going to add a little more viridian to this to make a little darker color green. And this is a really beautiful, intense green color. All right, so I've got a couple of shades of green here which will make painting the vase a little bit easier. Uh, and I won't have to do all of my mixing with a brush, although we will make a lighter color and a darker color on our brush. But for right now, this will get us going. So I'm gonna use my uh, three quarter inch flat brush and I'm going to load it with the lighter chartreuse green color. And then we're going to move on to the canvas and we're going to just begin to paint in the yellow green of our vase. So use the edge of your brush to create a nice crisp outline. And then just fill in with the light green color. Be sure to use an ample amount of paint. A lot of times people talk about their paint drying out on them and it's simply because you haven't put enough paint on the canvas. Right now I'm gonna just take my brush and put it into the darker green color. And over here on this side of the vase, I'm just going to apply that darker green shade and use the chisel edge of the brush to make sure to get a nice crisp edge on the vase. And then use the flat of the brush to apply the darker green. And then I'm just going to carry some of that darker green up under the foliage. And then just gently wipe the excess paint off of the brush and begin to blend and soften this. doesn't matter if you have some brush marks showing in your vase. It doesn't have to be completely rendered smooth. Just kind of soften those colors. I'm going to pick up some medium yellow and just a little yellow light on my brush. So I want to accent the vase a little bit with just some yellow. So I'm going to put some yellow on there and just soften that into the vase a little bit. Maybe add just a little bit more yellow. And just add that on. And I'm not really going to blend that in much more than I already have here. So wipe my brush off and I'm going to pick up some of my dark green and a little bit more Viridian and just brush mix a darker tone. And we're just going to add a little bit of this darker color over here on the right hand side of the vase. Right out at the edge. And then we're just going to soften that in a little bit. 
not trying to blend it in completely. So I think it's going to look a little better if you actually have some brush marks showing, uh, indicating that you have actually painted this. And I'll add a little bit more dark green right up here. Take the excess paint off of my brush by pinching it between my shop towel and then come back and just soften that extra little bit of dark green there. And we'll just move that color along. I'm going to pick up some of the original green color and come back and just add a little bit of that on and blend that up to soften that dark shading. And there's plenty of time to blend and play with this because of the extended working time of the Folk Art Pure Artist pigments. So I'm lightening my original green color with some yellow light. Just brush mixing a lighter tone here on the palette. And then I'm just going to come back on here and just soften that onto the vase. And one last thing to do here is to add a strong white highlight because this is in my mind, uh, nice glazed ceramic. So I'm gonna put a nice crisp white highlight on there with a palette knife. And I want you to pay attention to how I load my palette knife. So there's no paint on the palette knife at all. And I'm going to pick up some white paint and the white paint doesn't come all the way to the end or all the way to the tip. And I'm just gonna brush a little bit of this off on my palette to see what's happening. So I know when I go on to my painting, what's going to show up there. All right, so I've taken a little of the excess paint off and we're gonna come right on to our base and we're going to lay on a nice white highlight just like that. And it's stronger on one edge and then gently fades out as I just kind of skimmed that down a little bit. Okay, so that's how we painted our uh, chartreuse vase. And to keep our hands out of that, it would be a good time now to pause the video and make sure that the vase is thoroughly dry. Okay, so we have now dried our vase so that we don't need to worry about that and our background is still dry. So we are going to now begin to create some dark areas on our painting. I, I hesitate to actually call them leaves because uh, you all will try to uh, actually paint them as leaf shapes, but I just want to, we're gonna create a couple of dark areas over here and then I'm going to begin to develop uh, this kind of darker area that we have on the left side of our base. So I'm using my number 12 flat brush and I'm going to pick up some Viridian on my brush and a little Payne's Gray, which on the palette Payne's Gray looks like black, but it's really a beautiful dark, dark gray color. So I'm just brush mixing some Viridian and Payne's Gray, making a very, very dark green color. And I'm just going to begin to add in some of this dark color right next to the vase and up here under these flowers. And don't worry, I'm not concerned about what this looks like at this point. I'm just getting some paint on the canvas. And I've got a couple of dark areas that I'm going to put on over here. Again, holding the brush at the end of the handle. And I'm just going to scrub some of this dark color on. and add some up here and just scrub this on. And there I've got some dark areas. You can call those leaves. I think that if we leave a little bit up to the viewer's imagination, that will be all the better. Okay, so I'm just going to um, and I'm sorry, my hand's gonna probably be in the way a little bit, but I'm gonna have to, uh, as neatly as I can, just come in and cut in a little dark right around the left side of the vase. There we go, so I've got a nice crisp edge there. And now I'm just going to soften this color out. And I'm going to do that by wiping the excess color off of the brush, again, pinching it between the shop towel. I'm going to pick up floating medium on my brush, kind of clean my brush with the floating medium, wiping out the excess again. 
and loading my brush with some floating medium. And I'm just going to come over and just soften this color out just a little bit. Wipe the excess paint off of my brush and then take this and just feather this out just a little bit. And don't worry about how this looks yet. You just want a gradation of color from dark to medium to light to just a very, very soft feathered edge there. I'm gonna really wipe my brush out and pick up some more floating medium. So this time there's almost just floating medium in my brush and very little color. And once again, I'm just gonna scrape a little bit of this at the very outside edge, just softening it to create a little bit of a ragged edge there. And now we have created the darker parts of our floral painting. It's not necessary at this time to dry this. What I want to do now is I want to get some color all over the flower forms of uh, the different hydrangeas that we have in this vase. So I'm going to pick up some of the green color that we had uh, when we painted our vase and along with a little floating medium in the brush. And I'm gonna come up here and I'm just gonna scrub a little bit of this green color on, letting it fade out over the background color a little bit. The important thing is you want to make sure that your outside edge, that the shape of the flower form is interesting and pleasing to the viewer. You don't want this to look like some sort of pom-pom that you have there. It should have uh, some nicely shaped outside edges. Uh, some of it can be kind of rounded, some can be pointed, uh, but the important thing is that it not be just a nice round shape. Then I'm going to pick up a little bit of my uh, color that we started the vase with, and I'm going to brush mix some titanium white into that so that I'm creating a nice light green color. I'm loading up my flat brush with that. And then all I wanna do is just begin to lay on just a little bit of light color. And you can see how that really softens uh, the edges of this flower form. So I'm not painting petals, I'm just laying on some light areas. Okay, so that's plenty of work here on this uh, back clump of hydrangeas. And I'm going to turn my attention now to our uh, blue hydrangea over here. So the same brush, just again, wiping out the excess, pinching it between the shop towel. That also keeps your hand clean and it just grooms your brush back into a nice flat shape. It's better to do this where you fold your paper towel and pull the brush through that grooms the brush rather than doing some wisping on your paper towel like that, which just makes your brush uh, start to splay out. So always pinch and groom the brush and that'll get rid of the excess paint in your brush. So we're going to pick up some floating medium on our brush. And this still has all the green in it that we started with. And I'm gonna pick up a very little bit of Prussian blue and a little bit of ultramarine blue and just mix this here on my palette. And this will create a nice kind of aqua blue color. And we're going to begin to add some of this. You see that this is looking very similar to that, which is just fine. So we're just gonna add some of this in where one cluster of flowers dips behind the other. And just scrub this out. making sure that the outside edges of the flower form are interesting and not just like some gigantic pom-pom. You have to pay attention and constantly look at what you have on your canvas and make sure that you are achieving your goal of interesting shapes that are not rounded like a pom-pom. And this is really just to lay in some mass tone of our flower form. 
Obviously, I'm not trying to paint individual flower petals, just getting some color here to start out with. And I'll wipe my brush off once again, pinching it on the shop towel. And then we're going to add some purple to our large flower form. And that's going to be dioxazine purple with a little floating medium. And so I'm going to just begin over here where I've got uh, that dark color that I formed the leaf shapes with. So that as I'm softening that in, I'm picking up some of that color on my brush and mixing it in with the purple so that I have some variation in the color that I'm scrubbing on the canvas. So again, making sure that my flower form has a nice shape to the outside edge. That's what I'm most concerned about at this point. So I'm letting some of this color come over the vase and that's adding uh, what's going to be nice shadow on the vase. And again, over here, I'll pick up a little bit of that blue color and that'll soften in tying my flowers into my background. So again, just scrubbing this transparent color on, making sure that my flower form has a nice shape to it. Making a little bit more purple and floating medium mixture and just scrubbing this on. Again, I'm using my number 12 flat brush and dioxazine purple, and it's added, add some um, of the blue mixture added in. But again, this is pretty transparent and mostly concerned with the outside edge of the flower form. All right, so at this point, we have all of our flower kind of masked in, and you can see the outside shapes. It's interesting. It's got a nice, uh, pleasing balance to it. So I'm gonna come back and I'm going to add some darker color um, to my blue flower form. So I'm gonna pick up Prussian blue and ultramarine blue and mix just a little bit of floating medium in there. But this time it's gonna be more paint than floating medium. And you can decide how blue or how aqua your color comes out. If you add more Prussian blue, you're going to end up with a bit more of an aqua colored flower. If you use more um, ultramarine blue, you're gonna have a little bit cleaner blue flower. So I'm just going to kind of skim this color on, not concerned with completely covering the canvas. Just wanna add some dark tones to the flower form. And again, holding my brush as far back on the handle as I can so that I really am just applying this color loosely and casually to the painting. But you do wanna have some areas that are darker and some areas that are lighter, but again, not putting too much paint on. And I think that's gonna be fine. This has got some nice um, shape going on here, but we're gonna do the same thing with our dioxazine purple, more paint than floating medium. And we just need to add some dark areas in, and I'm just brushing this on using the flat surface of the brush. Again, make sure to hold the brush as far back on the handle as you can, and that really will uh, make you paint in a more casual manner. If you hold your brush like a pencil down near the ferrule, you're gonna be painting very tightly like that. But if you hold it at the back end of the brush, you really will be able to apply your color in a more casual manner. So again, just picking up a little bit more doxazine purple, and we're just laying in some dark areas, just creating some interest here uh, in the painting. You can't have everything all the same tone. You gotta have lights and darks in your painting. And you've got plenty of time to work with this because we're just skimming paint on and it doesn't matter if this underneath color is dry because we're just adding a little bit of color on top. Okay, we have all of our flower forms masked in and we've got dark areas on our blue flower form. We've added some nice dark areas here on our purple flower form. 
And this could be a good time to uh, pause your video and catch up with me at this point. And when we come back, we'll start to develop our light areas of our flowers. Okay, so our uh, painting has dried somewhat and we are going to just freshen up uh, just to give ourselves a little bit of color to work into. So some of our lighter green color with a little bit of floating medium, and I'm just brushing some of this on just lightly, just to give me, um, well, it gives a little different color and it gives me something to paint into. So I'm going to pick up titanium white on my brush. And I'm just dirtying that white up with just a little bit of green and maybe just a little bit of yellow for some variety. And we are going to begin to just kind of lay on some light areas. And you can see I'm laying this on and I'm just letting the paint rake off of the flat surface of the brush and collect on just the top weave of the canvas. So just kind of putting the brush parallel to the surface, touching it down and just letting whatever paint come off the brush as it will. Okay, so we're gonna leave that alone. And again, I did not try to paint a single flower petal. I'm going to now take some of my Prussian blue and ultramarine blue with floating medium. And you can see I can just soften that color right up on my palette with no problem whatsoever. Then we're gonna come here onto our blue flowers and I'm just going to brush some of this color on just to give me something a little bit more wet to work into. And I'm going to pick up white on my brush and just kind of dirty it up with some of that blue. Because I don't want a stark white, I want a very, very pale blue. And again, we're going to begin to just lay our brush uh, parallel to the surface and just let some of this lighter color rub off of the brush. Notice that I'm moving the brush around so that I get a variety of marks, turning my brush over, just letting the paint uh, just kind of scrape off of the, br of the brush, pick up a little bit more paint as I need it. You don't want to overload your brush because you really want the paint just to cling to the top of the weave of the canvas. Just touch the brush down and let the paint come off. I'm just adding some light color on to the flower form. I'm going to wipe my brush off and I'm going to highlight a little bit more, picking up more white, less of the blue on the brush this time. And you can see here on the palette, that was my light blue that I just put on and now I've got more white, and if there's a little blue mixed in, that's okay. But so much lighter than what we started out with. And I'm just going to, again, lay the brush down and let the paint just cling to the weave of the canvas. If you're getting solid areas of color, you have too much paint on your brush. So stop, wipe that excess paint off the brush, and then try again. Hold the brush at the end of the handle so that you paint in a much more relaxed, casual manner. And I'm liking how that's just kind of helping the outside edge of that flower form kind of disappear a little bit. Again, I am not trying to paint individual flower petals. I'm just creating some light areas Just letting the paint just scrape off the brush and cling to the upper weave of the canvas. If you start trying to paint flower petals, 
your painting is suddenly going to be um, start to look very tightly rendered and not uh, loose and fresh. Okay, so I think we're going to leave this alone at this point. So I've got a nice bright area here and some up there, but you can still see some of the dark and you can see some of the original color that we put on and the outside shape is not round like a pom-pom. So I've ticked off all the boxes here on this uh, flower form and I'm very happy with the way that looks. So I'm going to turn my attention now to the purple cluster of flowers and I'm going to pick up some dioxazine purple and some floating medium. And there was white in the brush, so that's okay. So we're just going to uh, scrub some of this color on just to give me a little wet base to work into. Just keeping this pretty light and airy. Okay, I'm gonna take my shop towel, I'm gonna fold it over the brush, pinch and wipe the excess color out of the brush. That's how we clean our brush. And then I will pick up some titanium white and just a little bit of the purple to create a very, very pale purple color. And this brush mixing is not difficult to do. We're just moving it around here on the palette till we create a nice, very, very soft kind of lavender color. And then once again, we're going to come up here onto our uh, flower form and we're just going to begin to add some light areas, just laying the brush down, letting it paint fall off the brush and collect onto the weave of the canvas, not filling this in solid, moving around on the canvas so that we have different amounts of color in different areas. Again, you'll be better off if you do not try to think of painting flower petals. We're just adding in some light areas. And down here, I want to add some light, but also leave that little bit of dark that creates that kind of shadowing um, as though our flower is hanging over the rim of the vase. And I'm loving how that little bit of light there really does look like it's casting a shadow. So again, using both sides of the brush, moving the brush around so that you're not painting in the same area over and over and over. You're just creating some nice light areas. And if you're used to painting everything very rendered, this will be a little bit of a challenge to you to paint in a more relaxed manner, but you can do it. Nothing that we teach you in any of the color lessons paintings is harder than you can do. So even if we have a difficult uh, subject that we're teaching or there's a difficult technique, we always break it down into manageable size, chunks that you can easily accomplish. Okay, so we've got some dark areas still showing and some lighter areas, and it's very important that you have some light and dark in your flower form. Okay, so I'm now going to turn my attention to the area of my table, and I'm doing that so that we can let some of this um, color that we've put on our flower forms become a little bit sticky and you'll see why we want that in just a little while. So I'm taking my brush. This is my three quarter inch flat brush and I'm picking up some titanium white and some floating medium. And I'm going to pick up some of my green colors that I used on the vase and make a nice light green color. And we're going to begin to develop the table line and you want to work carefully across your canvas so that your table line stays nice 
and even and straight. And then we're just going to begin to work some of this color into our table. I'm going to pick up just a little bit of white and just work some white into that just to create some value changes. And I'm going to leave some of these brush marks visible because I think that adds a little bit of interest to the foreground area. Picking up a little bit of floating medium so that I have less color as it comes next to the vase. And I'm just going to brush this color on. And over here, just brushing this on, not creating the dark area of purple just yet, but I'm just kind of filling in with a little bit of transparent green. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of Payne's Gray and just start to develop. This is very transparent. Lots of floating medium in my brush, and I'm just going to lay on some dark and pull that dark down into the table area. And just soften that a little bit. Carry a little bit of that dark color underneath the vase. We're not done with this. We've got more to put on. We're just establishing a little bit of color in the foreground area. We just want to make sure that we don't have white canvas popping up here in the foreground. All right, so at this point, I think it's at a good place where we can stop. We can dry uh, the entire painting, our flower forms and the table area, and then we'll come back and establish our shadowing on the table, and we'll come back and give some more highlights on our flowers. So at this point, you can pause your video and catch up with me where I am right now. Okay, so we are back now and our painting is all dry and we're going to create the shadowing um, to the right side of our vase and underneath our vase now. But we're going to begin um, by using our big one inch flat brush and I'm going to pick up some dioxazine purple and some floating medium, making this color transparent. And I'm going to add a little bit of Payne's Gray to this to tone down the brightness of that purple because I don't need a really, really bright color here. I'm going to add more floating medium to make this color transparent. And then I'm going to wipe my brush to take the excess paint out of it and load it with just a little bit of my dull transparent purple. And we're going to start right underneath the vase and I'm just going to apply a little bit of this color. And this looks a little strong to me. So I'm not going to keep doing that. I'm going to pick up some more floating medium and make this more transparent. And I'm going to brush a little bit of this on and just carry some of this out to the left a little bit, picking up more floating medium. So I want this to be nice, uh, crisp brush marks. If you're not happy with the way it looks, I'm going to take a shop towel and you can, just using a little bit of a shop towel wrapped around your finger, you can come back and you can just soften that color away, which I think gives a very, very nice effect. All right, so then we've got this area over here, which is a much darker color. So I'm going to clean my brush off on my shop towel again, pinching it and wiping it to get the excess paint off. And I'm going to pick up some of my dioxazine purple and Payne's gray mixture. And we're just going to continue over here with some of this darker purpley color. And Get a nice clean edge right up next to the vase. I'm 
if I need to, I can just take my folded shop towel and gently rub and soften that. Just creating a nice soft edge there. Then I'm going to pause and dry this. Uh, because I want to come back and put some much darker color on top, but I don't want to disturb this nice soft edge that I have. So you can pause your video and I'll just dry this and then we'll be back to add some extra dark shading. Okay, so I dried this light uh, transparent purple so that we can come back and put some darker shading on there without disturbing this. But I do want to come back and address this area. So using my large flat brush that we had just kind of put that color on there, I'm going to pick up some of this purple with a little bit of white on it. And I just want to come in and just kind of soften this outside edge. Pick up a little bit more white. Because this is just a little too harsh out here. That's much nicer with that addition of white. And we're just going to scrub some of this color back, just kind of softening up that dark area that we developed early on in our painting. And I've just add more white on the brush and I'm just losing this outside edge and softening that back just a little bit with the purple. And then so that purple doesn't look all alone out there, I'm going to strengthen it with just a little bit of dioxazine purple. And we're going to add just a little bit of purple in this area. Just kind of brushing some of that on. Very little paint, just skimming it on. And I want to strengthen that. Better to add this incrementally so that you can adjust it as you need to. Just want to strengthen that purple a little bit and add a little bit of a purple accent just kind of in that area. It's not representing anything, but it is kind of nice. I want a little more paint on my brush because I really do want to actually put a kind of a bold uh, brush mark of a very light purple in that area because I think it just needs a little bit of an accent. So. Just stroking that color on, and I'm just going to leave that just the way it is uh, with that nice bit of bright purple there. All right, I'm going to shift now to a number 12 flat brush and pick up dioxazine purple and a little Payne's gray. And I'm going to add just a very small amount of floating medium to the brush. So I want this to be a very, very dark purple color. And I'm going to just add some dark right next to the vase. And I'm just going to add a little bit right here at the edge of the table line. And I'm just touching the brush to the canvas. And then I'm going to begin get a little bit more color over there but then to make just some vertical pulls, just to kind of get some nice, rich, dark color in that area. And I'm going to continue some of this really dark color underneath the vase, but I do not want it to be like an outline right under the vase. So I'm gonna to touch the brush down, just creating a little bit of a dark area. Sure that's a little bit rounded there. And then I'm just going to add more dark right underneath the vase, just creating a bit of a shadow. But again, it's not it's not outlining underneath the vase. You see, I'll come back and I'll add a little bit of extra width there so that this has an interesting uh, shape to it. If it's just a line underneath the vase, then nobody is going to care to glance at that a second time. 
you have to make your painting interesting uh, in order for people to continue to want to look at it. All right, so again, taking the same color, and I'm just gonna add a little bit uh, of this very, very dark color right here at the table line. And again, you want to make sure that it's got a little bit of variation to it. And I'm going to add just a little bit of floating medium to my brush because I want to darken, make it a little bit wider right next to the vase. So I'm going to come in here and just use the very corner of my brush and just darken a little wider area right next to the vase. Just adding a little bit of interest there. And just coming over here and adding a little bit more dark, just so that there is a little bit of variation there. And I think that uh, adds enough here to give weight to the bottom of the canvas. And we're going to come now and we're going to start adding some highlights onto our flowers. And for that, I'm going to use. Uh, my painting knife, which is my small two and a half inch uh, trowel palette knife. And I'm going to load the palette knife with white paint. And I'll show you how I'm picking up the paint on my palette knife so that you can do the same thing. I'm picking up paint so that it's not all the way to the bottom. It doesn't quite come to the top. And there's just a small roll of paint on the palette knife. There's none on the other side. So my palette knife is very neatly and very carefully loaded with the white paint. And I'm going to just begin to brush on some white highlights. And these white highlights shouldn't appear um, thick and heavy at all. Uh, if your highlights are very, very heavy, then have less paint on your palette knife. But you just want to be able to travel on and soften some of these highlights onto your flower form. So again, load your palette knife as often as you need to, but come back and just trowel some very, very light highlights on your flowers because we really want to light up this painting. So touch it on there, and then you can use your palette knife flat down on the surface to soften those out. If you're bold, you can use a little bit more paint on your palette knife, and you can create some thicker, heavier highlights but you want to make sure that you have a variety of highlights on your flowers. So some heavier, some lighter. Again, not too much paint on your palette knife when you're starting to develop these highlights and apply them and you can soften them in as you need to. Make sure to clean your palette knife off from time to time, load it up, and then come back and just add some of the final white highlights on your flowers. And it's worth repeating again that I have not painted any flower petals this entire time. I've just talked about adding some light color here and there onto your flower forms. Here we're just adding highlights on, not trying to paint individual flower petals. So don't cover up everything that you've worked on. You put on that transparent layer of color to start with. Then you add it in your dark. Then we developed kind of our light areas. And now we're coming back and just lighting this up with some white highlights that should not be solid all over the painting. I'm gonna let some of them um, reach out to the edges. And again, just always picking up a small amount of paint, touching it to the surface, keeping your palette knife very, uh, flat down to the surface. And that's how you get these really interesting uh, shapes here on your painting. And you can soften that out as you need to. And if you don't have much paint on your palette knife, then you will uh, just leave some small little speckles of highlight 
that collect onto the top of the weave of the canvas. All right, so I'm looking at this and I'm thinking I'm just about done with the highlights. Just want to kind of break that edge up a little bit. And just checking to see that I've got a nice distribution of highlights on the painting and they're all pleasing to the eye. All right, and I believe that we have finished our chartreuse vase. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed our lesson of the chartreuse vase, where we did watercolor washes in the background and some impasto work to create some dimension on our flowers. Join me next time on Color Lessons when we'll be painting a cotton candy sunset.